Creativity Unleashed and today we have a really amazing video for you. We're building 40 foot trusses using a really cool principle. This here is a little small beam here. This is a 4 by 6 and it's 3 16 inch thick about. And we are going to be splitting it long by a plasma cutter to make two T sections. And with that, we're able to increase the flange width and build really good trusses. So we're also going to be using angle irons on both sides. These are inch and a half um, by eighth inch. And we're going to just be putting it on both sides, essentially making a sandwich. It goes together really fast and makes really strong, really easy to work with trusses that um, work out great. So without further ado, let's get on into the build process. Alright, so we just cut an 11.1 degree angle here on the bandsaw and we are going to cut it to length. Obviously this is a really long piece. Alright, so now it's cut to length. Um, we just cut it at 90 degrees real quick. I got it all clamped up so everything stays where it's supposed to be. And then over here on this end, it is cut at the 11.1 degrees. Since the trusses are over 30 feet long, they have to have some splices in them. And this particular one, they have two splices because I'm using up all of what would be waste. Um, so that way it works out perfectly. So I'm using a piece of beam as a straight edge to clamp everything to to keep the T-sections nice and straight and parallel. And then I'm going to be welding them with 7018 and making sure I'm doing a full penetration weld. All right, so here we have the truss laid out on the ground and we're getting all of the angle iron webbing clamped into place. Um, since these pieces are so long, um, they tend to have to be straightened a little bit so you have to force things to go where you want them to. So we ran a few string lines, clamped them in place with a few mag switches and with that we're straightening things up getting the all the webbing clamped in place and that'll help hold them parallel to each other and we're just about ready to get this first one welded up and we'll make sure everything is how we like it So here we're just finishing off the truss. We're getting all the pieces clamped into place. Then we'll just trim one of the ends 
a little bit wherever it needs it to fit right um, where they go and get them to match up really nicely and get clamps on all of them. Uh, it's very advisable to get tack welds on everything just to keep things from pulling out of shape before you go by and re-weld everything fully. Just about all the welding on this project has been done with an inverter welder. This particular machine is a Thermalark 161. Now this particular machine is made by Aesop. I also really love the Everlast welding machines. They do incredibly well. I'm using a nice long 50 foot lead which makes it incredibly convenient for when you're doing big projects like this to just be able to walk wherever you like and pull the cord along. Uh, all the flat hand welding is basically being done with the 8th inch 7024 electrode. They're really good because they put down a lot of metal really fast and you can run them at a higher amperage. Most of this is being done at around 140 amps. And then of course the all position welds are being done with 7018 and that's nearer to 80 to 100 amps depending the, the exact scenario. On some of the thin wall tubing that we use for like purlins and braces and some of that, we'll be using 8th inch 6013s and we'll also be using that from about 80 to 110 amps, um, just depending the scenarios. So when you use a magnet that's more adequate to what you're doing, to show you how easy it goes. All right, that's all there is to it. This thing's locked in place really well. This thing's not even moving at all. You can you can swing the truss practically around on it. Ready to get a weld. And we're done. The angle iron pieces that we are attaching on top of the trusses here are references for the purlin material. It saves a lot of time when you're installing the purlins because it keeps them from sliding and it keeps them nice and straight as long as you have your trusses positioned correctly. So it is a great feature to have added on your trusses. They also do something similar to this for when they're attaching wood purlins to metal trusses. In one of my other videos, I built this 5 horsepower air compressor with frequency drive. It was quite a neat process, so check it out if you're interested.
a piece of tubing under it as a straight edge to keep everything straight and parallel. And now I'm going to put on some tacks and take off the clamps. Since the tubing is only 1.6 millimeter thick, it can be a little challenging to stick weld, but what a technique that works very well is to turn the amperage up pretty hot and then just do really short bursts that penetrate all the way into it, but don't stick around long enough to burn a hole. Um, and that tends to work really well. As you can see, you do get a little bit of um, some teensy um, gas holes and stuff in the weld when you do all the little starts and stops. The reality is for most construction, um, considering how thin the tubing really is, um, you're getting a lot more metal there and it's not going to split or break. All right, so we're working on putting in the X braces between the trusses. So I'm gonna just show you what we got going on here. Um, so I just used chalk line, it might be hard to see in the video, and got the measurements between it figured out. This is about 21 foot three inches. And then I'm using plates in the corners. I got the tubing notched out here. We might show you that in a minute. And, um, so um, it's all centered and adjusted so that um, we'll just weld it like this, put it in place, and then we'll add the other two in like this um, once, we're, uh, once we get these um, welded up there in place on the next ones. So here you can see the X brace put into place. And essentially what I'm doing is just welding um, a 4x4 four four plate to that. I notched a corner out so that it fits tighter. And then here we're doing the exact same. Obviously it'll get welded more, but sometimes you have to adjust them just a little bit. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's pretty simple. Seems to be working out pretty well. So often in industrial buildings, I'll use like a four inch um, schedule 40 pipe on this big of a roof. And I just marked a circle and used the grinder to cut those nuts them out. And now okay. we're going to flip it and start. All right, so we got some rivets. Um, Self-tapping screws also work fine um, into there. And now I'm going to put in a bead of caulk. All right, sometimes the end caps, I just notch the ends and fold it in, but um, this one, I just bent this up real quick and um, this will just slide into place and we'll tap it in there and get it riveted. All right, so that's how the end cap looks. I'm riveted in place. We'll just throw some caulk on it, obviously. Um, but it leaves a nice finished look to it. All right, so we got most of the gutter up. You can see the straps are riveted on. Here's a joint seam. Um, we're just using self-tapping screws to fix it to the purlin. And here I got a clamp on there. I'm gonna put a rivet here, 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 a bunch of little rivets, several more on this top piece because that adds a lot of strength. Um, so yeah, here's the one that, another one of the downspouts. 
every about 30 feet. you all enjoyed the video and were able to learn something and that it sparked new creativity in whatever project you're up to now. It always requires a lot of time and effort to produce videos like this and if you enjoyed this kind of content consider throwing the dog a bone and supporting. Um, it would go a long ways to help produce more content and keep these videos rolling. You guys have a great one. Thanks!